Today we're checking out the Anchor Solix C1000 power station. It also has a really clever feature that allows you to handle larger resistive loads. We're gonna do that testing in the video. But let's go ahead and start with uh, showing you guys how the solar works and how you're able to get this thing charged up via the sun. So if you're out camping or something, that is really awesome. Now right here on this end, you can see we've got our spot to connect. So go ahead and connect that Oli. 176 watts. This thing will accept up to 600 watts of solar and they actually send a splitter. This splitter right here would allow us to connect two different solar panels at the same time. So we're gonna let this thing just sit here. All right, how long has it been? Like four hours, I think. Oh, 100%. So these are good to go. We can bring these in. It was pretty cool to be able to top off those batteries using solar. So now we're gonna go ahead and use this thing in what I think is one of the most practical ways possible, and that is to provide power on a job site when you don't have power. No power. This thing holds one kilowatt hour approximately, but it also is not so massive that you can't easily move it around. We can get up to 2400 watts surge and 1800 watts continuous. Now one cool thing we can do is add an expansion battery. Right up there you can see we're at 100% with our backup battery, 48% with this. We can run another 4.7 hours. Tower light right there that's plugged in, another one over here. And we've got these two massive, super bright LEDs. Real quick question for you guys. What do you think the optimal size is? Is a half a kilowatt hour enough? One kilowatt hour? Two, three? For a job site or a project where you need temporary power, do you still go to a gas generator all the time or do you use these things more often? It's pretty amazing that it's able to handle this vacuum fine too. <laughs> Well, I guess we overloaded it, huh? I don't think we should have been able to overload it. Oh, it's rebooting. It's not telling me anything. I'm gonna try it again. See, I'm not sure what happened right there. It does say that our update was successful. And now we should be able to turn on our AC output. That update didn't take long at all. Now we've got a drop cord connected to the circuit that goes to our furnace, which is gonna be perfect because then we can fire up the heat. It's actually super cold outside right now. When you're using a drop cord like this that doesn't have a black and a white, the smooth side of it is going to be the hot conductor, so that's gonna go to your black, and then the ribbed side is gonna go to your neutral. So we got this connected and I can hear the furnace coming on right now. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, sometimes power stations uh, can have a little bit of an issue with the, because they have a, a floating neutral, so basically the, the ground and the neutral are not bonded together, but most furnaces should work, but some of the more modern ones uh, might not, and you might have to temporarily create a neutral to ground bond uh, for your power station, but it doesn't sound like that's the issue in our case, because I hear it running right now. It looks like we're drawing 831 watts right now. So we could run the furnace for one and a half hours at this 50% battery level and 65% battery level. And Oli has another thing to plug in. What are you guys doing over there? Um. Wow. <laughs> so tell me about your situation. Okay. So right now we have an extension cord from the battery over there. And it goes up and has a little light. And so that's our light source. And yep. this is under the stairs and it's super fun. It's so super fun. We're going to spider webs. And I'm scared of spider webs and oh. spiders. Hmm. You're scared of spiders, right? Yeah. There she went. I'm curious if it's gonna charge sequentially. It looks like it's going to charge up the main battery first and then charge up the attached battery after that. We'll let this thing slowly charge up. I'm gonna go have supper. Uh, while I was gone, I was like, oh man, the heat is off. I had left these ports off right here. Um, but then I remembered, oh hey, I can turn them on. <laughs> so I just hit the power button on the AC uh, right here on the app, and that allowed me to turn on all these outlets, and the heat, the furnace, fired up on its own. That's pretty convenient. 
Now, after updating it, I have not been able to replicate it tripping out like that when it was under 1800 watts. So that's a good sign. It might've just been the early version of firmware that I was running on. Now let's go ahead and do the test on this thing where we can run more loads than it technically can handle. And we're gonna use Ole's electrical tester in order to demonstrate uh, how that works. It's actually really cool. Thanks Ole, by the way, for letting me use your electric tester. Drawing 1020 watts. Okay, let's see what, what it does when we put the toaster down. It's not quite overloaded. It will be when we switch to high here though. All right, let's see what happens. Come on. There we go. Okay, see our voltage dropping down here? It dropped it down to 110 volts. That is so cool. It's just gonna keep us tapped out at 1800 watts basically. And it's just gonna vary the voltage in order to maintain that load. And that's why these devices that maybe you wouldn't normally be able to run, it's able to run it because it just drops the voltage until it meets its max load. How cool is that? So super cool to see how it was able to drop that voltage down and dial in the wattage to exactly 1800 watts of continuous that it's able to handle. So just a really clever technology to have on board. Now obviously you need to pay attention to what you have connected during that time. If it were to drop the voltage too low, I think that would be detrimental, but at 110 volts, it's totally fine. I don't think that would even be a concern for any device that I'm aware of uh, for that being like outside of a normal range that would uh, damage the equipment. Uh, I don't know how far it will drop it before it just decides to cut it out. I'm guessing it's not too much farther uh, because safety protections like that would be very important so that you, you know, if it was going to just keep dropping it till it got to 50 volts or something in order to meet the resistive load, that wouldn't make any sense at all. You can see we've got our DC input and AC input. We can turn on ultra fast charging. That's where you can charge this thing up to 100% in an hour flat, which you really only want to use that if you need to. Oh, we can select when to turn off our AC output. That's kind of cool. And we also have this light on the front. That light is actually really a lot more useful than you would expect. I feel like every power station should have a light more similar to this. So overall, I think this is a great option to consider. I think this is fantastic for being able to take it out on your job site or use it when you're out working with your laptop. Like I was doing video editing with this thing, just super convenient. You got one kilowatt hour at your disposal with the base unit and you can just pop another one on if you want to. And it just, it just is a very nice portable size. It's not so heavy that I'm like breaking my back, getting it in and out of the car or dragging it around. I can carry it in one hand and carry my other bags in the other hand. And that's how convenient it is. What do they have like, no way. They're totally tamper resistant to a certain extent. I think that's it. We'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.